I know exactly how an amateur cook feel like when they hear the word tamper chocolate. They freak out. Come down, because you can still be an amateur cook and yet create beautiful chocolate confections just by learning how to properly work with it at home. Guess who's gonna teach you everything you need to know about chocolate? Chocolate starts with the cacao pod being harvested. This weird fruit is native from tropical parts of the planet. This is the process where many chocolate brands get their hands dirty, not by collecting pods, but by actually supporting child slavery at underdeveloped countries. The pot is open and the sweet pulp is left out for fermentation. They're left in the sun to dry. Their water content should drop from 50% to around 8%. And it is at this stage where most cocoa beans are shipped to manufacturers. The roasting process starts to develop a dark color and help eliminate any moisture. The seeds are then cracked, revealing cocoa nibs that were inside them. Yep, same cocoa nibs you buy to decorate your pastries. Then the grinding happens, not the app. The nibs are crushed and transformed into a paste called chocolate liquor. The chocolate liquid is pressed and it separates the cocoa butter from cocoa solids. Cocoa solids is what is ground into cocoa powder sometimes. Chocolate liquor is refined by big rollers smearing it. It eliminates all greediness. This is the process that makes your chocolate so creamy the way you like it. Well, the final step is to temper it. The process of heating, cooling and agitating the chocolate to refine its appearance and mouthfeel. And this is how your chocolate bar is made. First step to create molded chocolate and decorations is to temper it. Tempering just means putting the chocolate through a cycle of temperatures. Heat, cooling, heat again. This process is what professionals call tempering curve. Attention to the temperature based on the type of chocolate. All chocolate comes tempered from the manufacturer. Once you melt it, it becomes untempered. Doesn't matter if it hardens or not. Untempered chocolate doesn't have a very even appearance. It is not shiny, it doesn't melt nicely in your mouth, but it melts so easily at room temperature, which makes it really hard to work with. And it also does not snap, that very pleasant sound that only good chocolate makes. And it loses its marvelous aromas. So it's not just a matter of look, but taste. But it will look very sad and ugly if you don't temper it. Here in my bowl, I'm gonna melt 400 grams of dark chocolate. You can use any kind of chocolate you want. Just pay attention to the temperatures I showed you before. This one is 72%. It is my favorite. It's the perfect combination of sweetness and bitterness. And 72% uh, chocolate means 72% of cocoa butter and cocoa solids combined together. And by no means, this is chocolate chips. This is actually chocolate pistols. Chocolate chips contain lots of wax to remain that in that shape when you bake it. So it's not good chocolate. Just use a good chocolate. Chocolate cannot take too much heat, so I'm gonna melt this over a double boiler. Make sure the bottom of your bowl never touches the water. Stir until everything is melted and beautiful. We are looking to achieve 122 Fahrenheit, and it should be all melted by then. If you want your body to work as a thermometer, just touch the chocolate with the second phalanx of your index finger. At 122, it's gonna feel hot, but not burning. I truly believe in the capacity of manual human abilities, but if you've never tempered chocolate before, it's most likely you will screw it up without a thermometer. So I highly suggest you to get a thermometer. This one is infrared, it's really, really precise and you can find it at any hardware store. Oh. As soon as melted, remove your tempered chocolate from your water bath. My chocolate reached the right temperature. 122? Ah, this should never be your concern, because if you're working with chocolate, you will get dirty. Look at me, I'm just making it worse. And from this point, did I also mention that I ripped this leaf during filming? Jesus. There are three different techniques and three different ways for you to temper this chocolate. My favorite is tabling. It's that pour over the countertop technique that chocolatiers do, and you watch them doing it. 
it's everybody's favorite because when you watch it all you can think about is you under that chocolate fountain it's dripping true. all over your body it's amazing it's true. back to reality now i'm gonna pour two-thirds of my melted chocolate right here in my work surface only two-thirds don't forget that and all I have to do is spread and scrape until we reach a temperature of 81 degrees. And the reason why most pastry chefs and chocolatiers prefer to use a marble block is because marble is usually 15 degrees cooler than room temperature. So your chocolate is gonna get to 81 degrees pretty fast. That's what we are looking for here. If you don't have one, don't worry, you can even use a baking pan. I love this process. How can you not to look like you're like the queen of the world when you're doing this. This process is not just for cooling chocolate or showing off. It's actually agitating the chocolate to crystallize the cocoa butter. The cocoa butter is lazy lazy and it allows the seed crystals to multiply and basically regain stability. Yep, just melting it messes the whole thing up. Don't be lazy like cocoa butter. Temper your chocolate right. We're looking for 81, which should feel cool but not cold. Let's see. Okay, so my chocolate is at 81 degrees right now, and all I have to do is put it back in this bowl where the other one third of the chocolate is remaining. If one tiny teardrop of water falls here, your chocolate will sizzle and you're gonna lose the entire batch. There's nothing you can do if you sizzle chocolate. Absolutely nothing, just cry. Mm, crying is not really a good idea because I just said one teardrop can ruin the whole thing. And use it for like ganache or mousse. That's okay. At this point, the temperature of this bowl should have dropped. Now, all you have to do is bring it back to a double boiler until it reaches a 90 degrees. 90 is the magic mic number of bitter chocolate. And let's test it. Perfect. 90 degrees. Absolutely wonderful. Tempered chocolate will remain at this holding point for a fairly good amount of time. And even if the temperature starts dropping, you should use it for as long as you can. This is the gold liquid that will let you create anything. Bonbons, half dipped ham, half dipped pecan brittle, chocolate bunny, and so many other things. Don't use the tempered chocolate until you test it, or you can ruin an entire batch of whatever you're making. Spread some in a clean surface. If correctly tempered, it will set and look opaque in less than 10 minutes, and it will be free of bloom. I mean bloom, not boom. Now with this tempered chocolate, you can pour it in a mold and create tons of chocolate confections. And it will come off super, super easily because tempered chocolate contracts as it cools. So if you pour it in a mold, you don't even have to put it in a fridge. Maybe I need it. Else makes difference. Oh. We are not supposed to chew it. Chocolate's supposed to melt in your mouth. Nobody has that self-control. Mm. Did you see how shiny it is? Look. I hope you learn. Learn. And I hope you liked it. I also hope you learned a lot. And don't miss my next video. I'm gonna show you how to make filled bonbons with a very interesting feeling and very odd shape. It's gonna be a little pornographic. <laughs> Bling! No, it is not. It's just gonna be booby bonbons. Like bonbons in the shape of a boob. Don't forget to subscribe, to comment, and I will reply back. As much as I can, of course. Bye!